Hello everybody, welcome to our videos. My name is Jamie from Women's Games. Today we're doing an unboxing video. So what have I bought myself this time? I hope you know already because you've already clicked on the video. But inside this box is my SNES Mini. No, it's not tennis related, even though it says it quite clearly on the box. And you're probably thinking, why is it taking so long to get one? Well, I believe it came out in 2017, but back then about 60, 70 pounds. I didn't have that money to spend. But since then, they're now discontinued, not making them anymore. And that's why the prices have shot up into the air. Some places about 150 pounds plus. However, I didn't spend that. I spent 85 pounds of mine. I made it off on eBay and they accepted it. Now, it's not brand, brand, brand new. The box is not sealed, but inside is. If it's not, then the seller has got some answering to do. Now, I do own an original snares, got it here. I'm a big fan of the snares, however, I never got into game collecting for the snares. But as a result of that, I've only got two box versions. The first one is Earthworm Gym 2, and my favourite of the two, box version, believe it or not, being a big R Type fan, Super R Type, and R Type 3, which is collector's edition, came out in 2019. All the rest are cartridges. Here's some of my favourites. This is Killer Instinct, played at absolute death. Star Fox, Star Wing, whatever the case may be. Aladdin, another classic game, and another really good game of mine is. Donkey Kong Country. Apart from that, you know, I've got a grand total of 12, but two of them are boxed, all the rest are cartridges. But anyway, I'm a big fan of these mini systems. Now, I do have the NES Mini, as well as the Mega Drive Mini, and the PlayStation Classic, and of course, two CG4 Minis as well. And this is my latest purchase, let's open up this box. Said it before, said it many, many times before, but room for doing these sort of videos is never an easy task. But there we go. It's bubble wrapped, which is a good sign, a very, very good sign. Right, I'm even prepared with a knife. There we go. Okay, don't cut yourself, don't cut the box. Now, I have wanted one of these in quite some time. There we go, I finally got one. A Super Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Classic Mini. That's a quite a long title. And it contains 21 games. So it's got 21 games built in. Uh, plus Star Fox 2. I didn't know there was a Star Fox 2. Now, I'm not going to read all of them out because I'm bound to make a mistake. But some of those I do own and some of them I do not. There we go. Superb. We've got our on off switch, our reject button that doesn't do anything, and the reset button. There we go. So there we go, it's confirmed 2017. So it took me quite a few years, but there we go. Superb. Also has two controllers. I don't know why the NES only had one, but this one has two, which is tremendous. Cables, so many cables in my house. But of course, it's HDMI. There you go, another HDMI to add to my collection. I've got so many of these now. And last but not least, the operator's manual. Superb. Right, okay, let's set it up and fire it up. Absolutely superb. The look of it is very much similar to the NES Mini. Let's see what we got. Final Fantasy 3, Kirby Superstar, Kirby Stream Core, Mega Man 10, Secret of Mana, Star Fox, Star Fox 2, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Castlevania 3, Super Gods and Ghosts, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario RPG Legend of Seven Stars, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Punch Out, Legend of Zelda, Yoshi's Island, Contra 3, Donkey Kong Country, Earthbound, and F Zero. 21 games in total, but apparently you can add more. So let's pick one at random, shall we? There we go, one of my favourites on the snares. Absolutely superb game, Donkey Kong Country. Okay, let's start things off with classic. It's Donkey Kong Country, a 994 platformer game developed by Rare, published by Nintendo for the snares as part of Donkey Kong franchise. The game centres on the duo, Donkey Kong, his nephew Diddy Kong, and a quest to recover the Stolen Banana Horde for the King K. Raw and his Kremlin henchmen. This game has so many bananas, more bananas than Sainsbury's, but we work as a duo. If it's two of you, it works as a second hit, unless you fall into a bottomless pit. 
If you lose Diddy Kong or Donkey Kong, whatever the case may be, find a barrel with DK on it to get him back. So many secrets in this game, so many different characters, including the Rhino. The development of the game shortly after Rare found his brother and Tim Stamper run experience with the Silicon Graphics workstation to render 3D sprites. Nintendo became interested in Rare's work and required 49% of the company, leading to the production of the game for the snares using Alice and CGI technology. Right, superb game. I'm going to try and long play this in the future. But there we go, first of all done. Okay, level two. Now the Stamper Brothers express interest in creating a standalone Donkey Kong game. Assembling a team of 12 developers working on the game for 18 months. Donkey Kong Country is the first Donkey Kong game that was not produced or directed by the franchise creator Sergio Miyoto, although he was involved with the project. Following an aggressive marketing campaign, Donkey Kong Country received critical acclaim and sold more than 9 million copies worldwide, making it the third best-selling SNES game of all time. Donkey Kong Country redefined Donkey Kong series by giving Artichula 8 his own world to live in, and has since been cited as one of the greatest video games of all time. It was ported to the Game Boy in 2000, and again for the Game Boy Advance in 2003. And it was made available for the Virtual Console, and in 2017 the game was released part of the Super NES Classic Edition. At the moment it looks like English summer weather here is chucking it down. They can kill enemies in a number of ways, by spinning them, hitting them with barrels, or jumping on their heads. Watch out for armadillos, they're evil. Now, Donkey Kong Country received two direct sequels on the SNES. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Quest in 1995, and Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble in 1996. After 14 years, the series was revived in 2010 with a release of Donkey Kong Country Returns. You do have, brilliant. Right, let's see if we get to the exit. You can also swing, but avoid evil wasps. Sunny wasps in old school games. Don't fall off a cliff. There we go. That should be it. It's stopped. Right. We should be able to collect that if we go up here. It helps. There we go. Kong is confirmed. Which gives you another life. Okay. Level 3. The Donkey Kong Country is a platforming game which a player controls the protagonists of Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong through 40 levels of side scrolling action. Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong are the only main characters and the only ones playable in the game, and you can switch between the two if both are present on the screen. The main modes of travel are running, jumping and rolling, which both characters can do. Donkey Kong and Diddy have different advantages. Donkey Kong defeats enemies more easily and has the hand slap move that reveals bunches of hidden bananas. While Diddy is faster, smaller and can jump higher than Donkey Kong can. Right, we can also bounce on these tyres. Now you pick up a barrel and take it with you and use it against the enemy. Also, there are so many hidden areas that hurl you across the screen in some comical ways and move all over lots of bananas. Now, if you have two Kongs on the screen, it works as a second hit. One on his own takes a hit, that'd be an instant kill. And if you fall into a bottomless pit, solo or duo, you're going to be coming back from that. If you've passed a star barrel, that will work as a checkpoint. Now, these bananas do also work to your advantage because sometimes they can lead you to secret areas. So a lot of possibilities to get additional extras in this game. So many extra lives can be gained by collecting the Kong letters and also collecting extra life balloons. Now these barrels you can take them with you and you can kill multiple enemies with one barrel. So it does work to your advantage in quite a good way. Right, again, evil, evil wasps. Caught under narrow passageways and we're going to collect another icon, in this case, a swordfish. Another one you can get is a... Frog. There's so many awesome characters in this game. All got your advantage. And it works in different ways. There we go. Kong. Gains another life. Ten lives. Superb. Star Fox. Another tremendous game. Copyright 993. Nintendo. Okay, this is Star Fox. Star Fox is a spaceship shooter game series created by Nintendo. The game follows a combat team of animals called Star Fox. Led by chief protagonist Fox McCloud. The gameplay involves ventures around a laden energy system in the future it all bring fighting aircraft and other vehicles and on foot. The original Star Fox 993 was a forward scoring 3D rail shooter, although later titles added more dimensional freedom. The first game in the series, developed by Nintendo EAD and programmed by Arduino Software, used the Super MX chip to create the first accelerated 3D gaming home experience on home systems. The Super MX chip was an additional mass coprocessor that was built into the cartridge to help the SNES better render the game's graphics. The 
The Super Apex Chip was used in other games as well, with some increasing process and speed. Its reboot, Star Fox 64, further realised the video game industry by being the first Nintendo 64 game to feature the Rumble Pack. That was difficult to read and do this game. It's a tremendous game. So I'm not alone, I do have a team with me. But also, I spend more time getting told off by them because I keep attacking people that I shouldn't do. Because you've got to try and work as a team. Sometimes you've got to help them, and sometimes they've got to help you. But when you shoot someone that they're trying to shoot, they can tell you off. We have two lives, and also we have a shield on the bottom left, and we have our noble bombs. It's going to save the more deadly enemies ahead. But again, an absolutely superb game. Made it loads in the old days. The first release, Star Fox, was released on the 21st of February 1993, and Star Fox 2 released on the 29th of September 2017. It's amazing, I haven't played. Didn't know it existed, I have to admit. Right, brilliant game. Really good game. Fairest I've got. Level 6. Something like that. I've streamed it once before. And if you go through those wings, that actually extends your energy. Or shield, whatever the case may be. But hitting a pillar is going to change all that. First game, Star Fox, was known as Star Wing in Europe and Australia, was released for the snares in 1993. Fox McCloud and his team, Slippery Toe, Peppy Hare, and Falcon Lombardi take on Andros, who threatens to overthrow the Leyland system. Several boss battles from the game are included as mini games on the Wii title WarioWare Smooth Moves using the Wii Remote to fly the ship. Right, boss battle is not far away. Energy is okay. Probably going to use my first Nova Bomb here. Now you've got to shoot the areas that are flashing. But only when they're visible, and not when visible all the time. Now it does seem like I'm actually going solo now. I don't know where my teammates are, but they don't help me with boss battles, it seems. And every time you successfully shoot the air and it's flashing, that part will actually fall off. Which does look very, very good, actually, I have to admit. It really does. There's my first Nova Bob, which done some serious damage. Now each energy is at the top right corner of the screen. But of course, every time a part falls off, it's not the end for him. He still moves around. And moves around very well. Yeah, I don't know where my teammates are. Perhaps they all got a boss of their own to deal with. At the moment, I'm going solo on this one. There we go, we power all my energy. It was terrible. Absolutely poo. There we go. Superb game. Brilliant game. Where's my teammates? Stage one clear. All oh, ships check in. So far, so good. good. Okay, okay, what's next? Be a bit more careful next time, Fox. Well, look at my energy. Yes, I should be. Right, score 80%. Total score 8,000. Shield of teammates. There we go. There you go, you cannot go wrong with a little bit of Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting. It's a very long title. Let's go. Okay, who should we be? Who are you? Why not? USSR. Zangief. Okay, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting is a competitive fighting game released for arcades by Capcom in 1992. It's the third game in the Street Fighter 2 sub-series of Street Fighter fighting games following Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, released less than a year after the previous instalment. Hyper Fighting introduced a faster playing speed and new special move for certain characters, as well as further refinement to the character balance. Did that without even looking. Time bonus, vital bonus and total bonus. Two wins to win the fight. Round 2. Hyper Fighting is the final arcade game in the Street Fighter 2 series to use the original CP system hardware. It is distributed was an upgrade kit designed to installment into Championship Edition printed circuit boards. The next game in the series, Super Street Fighter 2, uses the CP system assessor, the CP system 2. Blimey, how difficult was that? Right, we've got two of those, which means a win for Ryu. You do quite well, but you need more training to defeat me. And you also need more training to try and read and play at the same time. India. India. Dalsim. Ryu vs Dalsim. Now, Hyper Fighting features faster playing speed compared to Championship Edition. And as a result, the input for special moves and combos require more precise timing. 
Faster playing speed also allows players to get into the battle quicker, as well as to react quicker. All the fighters, with the exception of Gaio and the four Shadow bosses, are given at least one new special move. Again, didn't know a lot about it. I was reading statistics while doing it. A win for Ryu. Now, Del Sim is a good character. Here's something that Ryu doesn't have. Stretchy arms on the left. However, Ryu and Ken, of course, are well known for the Shokens and the Hadoukens, and the other one I can't pronounce, which is that one. Each fighter also receives a new default palette. The original palettes are now featured as alternative palettes for each character, replacing the ones that were used in Champions Edition. The only character except for this change is M. Bison, who retains his original design palette, but still gives a different alternative palette. Palette. It's like looking through a mirror, only not. It's Ryu versus Ryu. I'm on the left, Ryu's on the right. The port was released for the Super Famicom on July 11th, 993 in Japan, and the Super NES in August 993 in North America and October 993 in the PAL region. The port was just the port was developed using the NES port for the original Street Fighter 2 as its base, with a larger cartridge size of 20 megabits. Despite being titled Turbo, this port is also contained in the Champions Edition version of the game and in the form of the normal mode. The game's playing speed is adjustable in Turbo mode with up to four settings by default. With a cheat code that allows up to six faster settings. Other cheat codes allow players to enable and disable through moves in versus mode, as well as other playthrough single player modes with all the special moves disabled. Well, I don't use cheats, never do. There we go, kick to the face. That's enough to finish off Ryu by getting beaten by Ryu. There we go. You must defeat my Dragon Punch to set a chance. Right, bonus stage. Destroy the car. Quite a lot of these old school beat em up games are very well known for blowing up cars. With your feet, with your fists, and some games are lead piping. Let's smash this car up. This guy's not going to be happy when he comes back from doing his shopping to realise his car's been smashed up by Ryu's feet. There we go. Perfect. perfect. Not perfect for the owner. He'd be furious. Okay, Blanka versus Del Sim. Now, Blanka is very well known for electrifying people to see their skin and bones. But in saying that, there's not a lot of body fat to Del Sim. So you see his bones anyway, whether he's electrified or not. And the pitch change in the character's voices when they perform a variety of special moves based on the strength level was attacked was removed. When the voice tips announced the saying the names of each country was restored, along with the barrel breaking bonus stage that was removed in the first SNES port. The graphics of each character's ending was changed to make them more accurate to the arcade version. Sound effects featuring people or animals shouting after the round ended was also added as well. Right, round two. There we go. Seeing you in action is a joke. Okay, this is Super Mario World. I haven't played it for years. Super Mario World is a 1990s side scrolling platformer game developed and published by Nintendo for the SNES. The story takes place as Mario tries to save Princess Toadstool and the Dinosaur Land from the series antagonist Bowser and his minions, the Koopalings. The game is similar to previous Super Mario games. The player takes control of Mario or Luigi, and the object of each level is to find the flagpole at the end of each stage. Super Mario World introduced Yoshi, a dinosaur who can eat enemies and gain abilities by eating shells of Koopa Troopers. Now, like the other ones, you pick up a mushroom to gain in size, and that allows you to take another hit. But in this one, you can actually gain another one. So as you can see, at the top of the screen, I have another one. So if I take a hit, lose it, I gain it back immediately. That is the world's biggest bullet. They can also pick up shells and use them against the enemies, and also use it to find additional lives. So we wait patiently, wait for drop, and then we gain another life. We've got six lives now. Now these take two squishes to completely kill them. Right, we can't fire yet. Get that and we will. Superb. Now we're fighting back with fire. And when you kill an enemy, you get a coin. And of course, you can also sprint in this game, like you can with all the other ones. But this is a superb game. I've for years. Do you own it, but not as a box version. There we go. Superb. Well done, Mario. Course clear. 186 seconds remaining, times 50, lots of points. Super Mario World is often considered as one of the greatest video games of all time, selling over 20 million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling SNES game. 
It also led to an animated television series of the same name, and a prequel, Yoshi's Island, released in August and October 1995. It has been re-released on multiple occasions. It was part of a 994 compilation Super Mario Bros. All-Stars and Super Mario World on the SNES, and was re-released for the Game Boy Advance at Super Mario World Super Mario Advance 2 in October 2001 on the Virtual Console for the Wii, Wii U, and a new Nintendo 3DS console, and as part of the Super NES Classic Edition. Right, we are Yoshi. You can eat apples and also consume the enemy and use it against other enemies. It was also released on the Nintendo Switch through Nintendo Switch Online using the Super Nintendo Entertainment System app. And it's also, of course, styled in the Super Mario Maker and Super Mario Maker 2. That was difficult to do and read this, my lord. Right. Now, when you find an egg, that's when you find Yoshi. If you find any more eggs after that, and you still have Yoshi, then you gain another life. At the moment, we have 11 lives, so it's going really well here. Right, let's grab the beanstalk. First, we've got to dismount. So many secrets to find this game. There we go. Now, if you take one hit, Yoshi will run off. However, you can get back on him if you find him before he goes off the screen. Watch out for evil moles. And, of course, you can go through some pipes, like you would do in other Mario games. Keep eating those apples. Superb game. I've played it for years. There we go. He poos out an egg, eat it, and we gain another life. We've got 12 lives now. Hit that, and more platforms arrive. It is a really, really good game. I've played it for years. There we go. Superb. 12 Mario lives. 250 seconds times 50 is a lot of points. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I have never played this before. Copyright 1991 by Capcom. Playing this for the absolute first time. What is it with these people getting captured all the time? Who was playing as a princess in Super Mario? Always getting into trouble. Ready and go. This is Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Action side scrolling platformer game developed and published by Capcom for the SNES in 1991. It's the third game in the Ghosts and Goblins series. The game was included in game compilation Capcom Generation The Chronicles of Arthur, released for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn, as well as Capcom Classic Collection, released for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, and Capcom Classic Collection Reloaded for the PlayStation Portable. A remake of the game was made for the Game Boy Advance, which features additional game modes and new stages. Right, these games are always known for their difficulty, and this one is very, very difficult indeed. We do have a few additional enhancements, including that double jump. I lost my armour, but hopefully I'll get it back soon. The problem with these games is you don't get your armour back as often as you would like. Now, I've picked up quite a bad weapon, but it's good for enemies in the air, but not good for enemies that are on the ground in front of you, because it goes up. Now, you can get additional armour, and you can upgrade it quite a few times. Now, I do have a little bit of slowdown, but again, not too bad. And your character cannot swim. Later on, there is water. And water is no good thing for old school retro gaming. Now, the zombies come out of the ground, and we have wolves. But this weapon is poo. Really poo. Even crouching, it's quite difficult to shoot something in front of you. And this is going up a slope. But again, we have time limit. This game does not need a time limit, but it is active. And we have two lives. I need my armour. Surely there's going to be some armour around here. Now, some treasure chests are good, and some are not so good. One of them can turn you into a baby, which is going to happen right on cue. Right, am I going to do this? I don't know. Yes, just. And you can't throw your weapon up. You can jump while throwing it, but you can't throw it directly up, which happened in other versions. Right, I desperately need my armour. Now, water is not a good thing. If you stay on here, we should be safe. Now, that double jump is absolutely superb. It does get you out of some very, very difficult situations. And so is getting armour. That also gets me out of some very difficult situations. Now, hopefully I'll get it back very, very soon. Finally, get killed by a shell. Now, if I jump to here, a chest should appear. And that should be armour. Now, your time does extend over the course of the level, and also you do get checkpoints, which is also a marvellous thing. But sometimes that double jump can be a little bit risky for situations like that. Right, let's go. Now, this was a quest is a long play a long time ago, but the trouble is they didn't have it in the old days. But yeah, maybe in the future, who knows? Now these, I assume they're cannons. You can't kill them, but they move when the ground drops. And it does quite a lot. We've got blocks and money in the air. Pick up the money. 
1,000 for that one. Now, over there is another chest. Do I risk it? Let's risk it. Why not? Let me turn into a baby for some time. Now, what's going to have been? Other versions get turned into ducks, frogs, even old men. Right, kill the blob. Ugh, risky. There we go, I'll take that. So that upgrades your attack, but I lost it straight away by getting hit by a blob. Never mind. Money. We like money. Jump over that, and it's going to go down the hill. Luckily, that double jump is superb. Now, some chests are hidden, which require you to jump from a certain point. Right, boss battle. It seems like I'm going to have to do it like this. I'm going to get my armor back. It's too late. Never mind. Good weapon. This is the dagger, which is the best one, in my opinion. The worst one is a torch. Right, we've got a bird. A big, big bird. Bigger than the one in Sesame Street. They can also shoot while jumping backwards. And it's extended neck. Right. Shoot him in the face. Shoot him anywhere. Anywhere's good. Anywhere helps. There we go. Boom, boom, pow. Thank you for coming in. When you end the level, you get a clear bonus and you get your armor back. Arthur starts the game with an ordinary suit of armor, which may be upgraded up to three times. The first armor is a bronze armor, which enhances Arthur's firepower. The second armor is a golden armor, which allows Arthur to charge his firepower to unleash a magical attack. The golden armor comes with a shield that can block one projectile before breaking. The last upgrade is a shield that can take three projectiles before breaking. And also allows Arthur to charge up his superpower faster. No matter how upgraded, his armor falls off if he touches an enemy, leaving him defenseless in his underwear. At which point he will die if he gets hit again. Shields can only block projectiles when Arthur is standing still. Right, we're on a boat. A pirate ship. Surrounded by lots of ghosts, water and rotating blades. Swinging blades, should we say. Ones that would look quite like the ones that are used in saw films. So don't be hit by that. So every so often, ghosts will arrive on the sea. However, uh, some enemies do carry items which you pick up. Anything from points to additional weapons. Right, water is not a good thing, but this place, this level, has a lot of it. Now, some chests are good, and some chests are bad, and some can contain enemies. As well as magicians that turn into babies. But this level, I've never got past. But I do have a good weapon. Now, like ghouls and ghosts, hidden treasure chests can be found in, with weapons, um, armor upgrades, bonus items, and sometimes unwanted traps, such as bear traps or evil magicians who transform Arthur. Treasure chests are hidden and can be only accessed by moving through specific areas of the screen, which will cause them to appear. One key feature is the double jump, which allows Arthur to jump into the air and then allow him to jump again. However, the player has no direct control of Arthur's movement once in the air. The second jump can change direction, but that is the only control the players have. Right, we're on a plank of wood, but this plank of wood will move with you. But of course, the water is not going to stay still, it will be that simple. Right, now I've got the best weapon I feel. Quite a lot of the weapons in this game are poo. Including the torch. And also the crossbow is not very good. It's good for enemies in the air, but not good for anything that's in front of you. Now also, some weapons have faster rates than others. Right, avoid the fish. At the moment we have our armour. We don't have any upgradable armour. Not yet. We'll blast our way through. They can also shoot through the wall. Watch out for fish. The weather is absolutely terrible. They don't get struck by lightning. What would be that mean? Right, hit those, and we will get over there quickly. We're avoiding fish. And collecting money. Right, 3 minutes 25 on the clock. Never actually seen the boss on this one. Right, we've got to move now. We've got to move now. Ugh. Kill that thing, collect that. This is definitely the best weapon. In my opinion. Good fast rate of fire. That was lucky! My lord, I got lucky there. I was going to go into the drink. But 
first time ever an enemy actually works my advantage there. This has got to be boss territory. It's opened up and it's quietened down. A boss battle on the water doesn't sound like fun for me. Right, I'm guessing this is it. Okay. Water is where this battle should take place. Okay. Handle that. This was not too bad. It's early stage. With this weapon, it should be a breeze. It should be. Okay, go forward. It's nice that they back off. That's a good thing. Rather than boxing through into a corner. Oh, there we go! That was actually not too bad, that one. That was using the first one. We have a key! There we go! Superb! Clear bonus! Blimey, did that one of my first attempt? Got the key! Blimey. Super Mario Kart! My lord, I haven't played this for absolutely years. Copyright 992 Nintendo. Choose your driver. Well, Yoshi is my favourite. We'll go for Yoshi. Okay? I'm okay. Mushroom Cup Race, Flower Cup Race, Star Cup Race. We'll go for Mushroom Cup Race. Okay, Super Mario Kart is a 992 kart racing video game. Verts and published by Nintendo for the SNES. It's the first of the Mario Kart series and was released in Japan and North America in 992 and in Europe the following year. And went on to sell 8.76 million copies, making it the fourth best-selling game on the SNES. Super Mario Kart was re-released on the Wii's Virtual Console in 2009 and on the Wii U's Virtual Console in 2013. And of course, on this system in 2017. Right, I am Yoshi, my favourite character in these games, and we have a shell. Which you can use against the enemy, you throw them forwards or back. The red ones are better than the green, because they home in. Right, banana skins also work to your advantage. They can be thrown backwards or forwards, and they'll make it a bit of a slippery slope for them. Right, you can pick up coins as well. At the moment, I'm in first place. So if possible, keep throwing weapons behind, make it difficult for the opposition. Now, I love the fact that you can see the map at all times on the bottom of the screen. And when you have an attack being thrown in your direction, it actually does appear on the bottom side of the screen, so you can actually avoid it, or try and avoid it. Right, so many banana skins being thrown here. Not quite to Donkey Kong territory, but then Donkey Kong is on this race. I'm in first place, avoid the pipes. Superb game. Not played all of them, but played the popular ones. A bit of off-roading. Not too shabby at all. There we go. Well done, Yoshi. Oh, he's happy. There we go. 1 minute 23, 28. Lap time. There we go. Superb. I'm happy with that. In Super Mario Kart, the player takes control of one of eight Mario series characters. In single player mode, players can race against computer controlled characters in multi race cups over three difficulty levels. During the races, offensive and speed boosting power ups can work to your advantage. Alternatively, players can race against the clock in time trial mode. In multiplayer mode, two players can simultaneously take part in the cups or race against each other in a single race mode. The third multiplayer mode is battle mode. The aim is to defeat other characters by attacking them with power-ups, destroying the balloons that surround their cart. Again, that was difficult to do while playing this game. Right, I'm in third place. Okay, we've got a shell. And that can be used forward or back. But unlike the red shell, it doesn't go in a straight line, it just places it and lands on the spot. There we go. Now you can also pick up coins, which gains you a few coins. The star, which I believe you only get if you're far back, makes you invincible for a short period of time. Or makes you faster, or maybe even both, I'm not sure. The other power-up you can get is this one, which is a banana skin. You can also slip on your own banana skins, or get hit by your own shells. Right, where are we now? We've got 12 coins. What race are we on? What lap are we on? Three, I believe. Okay, I'm still in first place. Well done, Yoshi. You are my favourite of this game. In fact, you're my favourite in all the Mario games. Always have liked Yoshi. Right, what have we got? More 
Banana skins. Okay, I don't want to lose it now. Well, quite a decent lead. Go off the track, don't hit a chew. Right, we're going to lap Luigi. And he's not going to be proud of that. Right, final lap. Go across the bridge. There's another, another one. So many banana skins here. Right, don't lose it now, Jamie. Don't lose it now. Don't lose it anywhere, for that matter. We've got coins by driving over them. There's Toad. Not quite going to overlap Toad, but there we go. Superb. There you go. Total, two minutes and one second. Results. Yoshi, two minutes, one second. Koopa Trooper, two minutes, two. Donkey Kong Jr., 203, Princess 211, Bowser 228, Mario 229, Toad 230, Luigi 231. Super Punch Out! Copyright 994 Nintendo. Never played it before. Minor Circuit, Gabby J from France, age 56. Let me win. I've lost so many times, I forgot how winning feels. Well, you might win against me, maybe. Super Punch Out is a boxing game developed and published by Nintendo for the SNES. Yay. It was released in September 14, 994 in North America, and again in the same region in 996. It was released in Europe in January 26, 995 for the same console, and in Japan in 998 for the Power Nintendo Flash RAM cartridge. And the Super Famicom. The game was also included in the GameCube version of Fight Night Round 2 as an extra game due to the inclusion of Little Mac in the game. The game was released for the Wii's Virtual Console in Europe on March 20, 2009, in North America on March 30, 2009, and in Japan on July 7, 2009. The game was also released on the new Nintendo 3DS eShop on May 5, 2016. Right, who's winning? Me! But I haven't really been paying much attention. He's down again. Nintendo re-released Super Punch-Out in the United States in September 2007 as part of the company's Super NES Classic Edition. Not looking good for him, is it? There we go. That is going to hurt. Right round of cheekbones. TKO. I'll take that. What did it mean? Peter Caden says. This match total. Minor circuit total. There we go. Any outstanding energy is converted into points. There we go. Lots of points. Stammer remaining bonus, time bonus, re no rematch bonus. There we go. Lots of bonuses. New record. I'll take that. The Bear Hugger from Canada. A32. Okay. Watch out. I'm a killer. I am the Bear Hugger. Next up is Bear Hugger. And he's a gigantic dude. A bit different to my character. Right. See how we do. When he does that, back off. Otherwise, you'll squish your head like a Jack's finishing move in Mortal Kombat 2. Go for the kill. Hit with everything we've got. We need to back off from time to time to get your stamina back. When you get that, use it well. Really good fun. Really good game, actually. I mean, I'm not great at the first game. But a long play request has been made. I've got to play a lot better than this. Back off and then attack. Do what your trainer tells you to do. However, I'm doing a lot worse than he is. There we go, just. In Super Punch-Out, the player controls Little Mac as he fights his way to become the World Boxing Association Champion. Fights from behind a back perspective. Must knock out their opponent in three minutes to win. Right, my energy is terrible. His is good. Right. You know when your power-up is ready because the S and the bottom is flashing and also I think your gloves also flash as well. So make sure you use it wisely. I don't know what he's doing, is he grabbing his beard? I think so. Or his chest hair, one or two. Right, my mouthpiece is out. 
Players can launch jabs, hooks, and uppercuts against the opponent, as well as block, dodge, and duck opponent's attacks. Right, I think I've just got the upper advantage on this one. <laughs> oh my lord. Come on. Have some of that. Right in the chin. It also features voice acting by Charles Martinet. Oh my lord. I thought that'd be it. Use your special. Come on. And get on the high. There we go. That should do it. That should do it. TKO. I'll take that. Again, not professionally dumb. I'm playing this for the absolute first time. I figured out how to put games onto the stairs, and this is Super Tokem. Today is a glorious day. This is Super Tokem. I'm playing it for the absolute Why first not? time on the stairs. I finally figured out how to add more games to it. Super Tokem is the fifth video game in the Tokem series for the stairs, released in 1993. Super Tokem was also released on Virtual Console in Europe and Australia on February 29th, 2008, and in North America on March 3rd, 2008. And it's brilliant! It looks brilliant, it sounds brilliant, really, really happy. Today is a good day. So what do we have in store? We have four lights, we have a time limit, and an energy bar. What else do we have? We jump on enemies' heads, we have lightning, we have power lines, and we have a gyroscope. Superb, I definitely going to shoot this in the future. I have to admit, I do prefer the new version more, but I'm always going to say that in the first version I played. But take nothing away from this. Right, we're invincible with a shield. And it's very, very bad weather out here. Which affects your jump. And speaking of jump, that's the only thing I would change is his jump. It's not fantastic. You jump a lot higher in other versions. Right. I love the fact that it tells you where to go. Sometimes you can be a bit lost in a game like this. Power-ups are there. Of plenty. Amazing guy. I'm invincible. Brilliant. Amazing music. Right. Now the lightning works in a different way. It doesn't actually kill the enemies, it freezes them to the spot. Now in Token 3, the lightning was replaced by a grappling hook, which took some getting used to. But once you got used to it, it works really well. But I'm glad the lightning is back. The enemies take a lot of hits. There are power-ups of plenty here. I need some energy. I can pick up along the way. Diamonds, gems, crystals, and freeze the enemies. You can also jump on their heads. My right, energy is poo. This game is not poo. This is amazing. Last the way through. More hits, I'm a dead man. So you freeze into the spot and then go for the kill. Freeze into the spot, go for the kill. Shield, I'll take that. Go. Health is really bad. Exit is in our sights. There we go. Super Token was developed by Factor 5 and published by Seiko and plays similar to Mega Token, also developed by Factor 5 and shares a similar visual style. The game has a different set of levels. However, the feature of Freeze Beam in place of the original Lightning Whip. The game also features four wells and ends with an HR Geiger inspired alien boss. Despite the representation of the machine, similar to the feature that in Mega Token appeared in the prologue. Right, a boss battle, and it looks the bee's knees. Right, so the freeze is not going to work here. We're not going to be able to freeze this thing. Only works with small enemies. There we go. Glad to introduce it, though. Four lives. Tremendous music. Score 10,100 points. Energy is maxed out. Time is at the top. Why does it have to have a time? There we go. What a game! What a game! Is it done? Power up. No, we're still going. There we go. Right, you can also go in the water, and of course, it's never going to be safe in water. It never is. We have even fish. Protects. 
so many hits. Can you freeze a fish? And indeed. Brilliant. You know what? I think it's probably my new favourite game on the SNES. I love it that much. This is absolutely brilliant. Really pleased with this. Alright, okay. What's going on here? We're safe in a gyroscope. Yes, we are, but it's time. Don't stay in it for long. Bar the top tells you so. Alright, energy. Woohoo! That's it this way. Lava. Shield. Yes! Save from everything. Do that. Yeah, the one thing will change is jump. It's the only thing. Every uh. takes so many hits as well. Even small things. Oh! I'm losing ghost mode again. Energy, I'll take that. Power up. Freeze, you freeze so many enemies here. Look at that. What's going on? Time oh, is ticking away. So a boss that is very similar to Tolkien 2, of course. Similar attack patterns, similar things happening. When you jump, drop the ball from the top. Maybe your time is ticking away. His life is fading away. There we go. Two lives remaining. I have to admit, it's taking to get used to, because a game like this, I'm used to using a joystick. I'm used to up being up, not a fire button being up. And I set the button for fire. And gyroscopes. And lasers. There you go, Diamonds Collected 123, missed 180, but I was playing it for the first time. There we go. Spot! Now, I played this quite a lot in the old days, and one of my friends, Nintendo SNESes, and the Amiga version is great, I love it, but there is an issue with the screen. So let's refresh my memory, what's it like on the SNES? Collect 60 cool points. I shall do indeed. This is Cool Spot, a 993 platform video game developed and published by Virgin Games for the Mega Drive Genesis and the SNES. The game was later ported to Master System, Game Boy, Game Gear, Amiga, and DOS in 1994. The title character is Cool Spot, a mascot from the soft drink brand 7 Up. Cool Spot's appearance is his own game. At the same time, other notable mascots were doing the same thing, including Chester the Cheetah and the Noid. We're also appearing in their own games. This game I do own on my Amiga. I played it to absolute death. However, I did play this quite a lot on one of my friends' houses in the old days. And this one moves so much more smoothly than the Amiga. But take nothing away from the Amiga. It's a tremendous game. I love it. But the movement, like Global Gladiators, is awful. But it does move a lot more easily, a lot more smoothly. And plays a lot better. But I love the music more on the Amiga. Now we have a time limit, plus we have three lives. Your energy is at the top left, the same place where we are locating our tokens. At the moment we have 24%. Now I'm going to backtrack and go to the area I would normally go. It's tricky, but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to risk it for some tokens. At the moment we have 24%. Once you've found the quantity you require, you find a cage. And we shoot it with our bubble. And these bubbles you can shoot in multiple directions. And you can pick up so many in this game, as well as energy, extra time, and you can also get a life and extended continues. Which you get by doing a bonus stage. But you need a lot of tokens to get to the bonus stage. Now some bubbles will hurl you into the air. But I also pop it. Right, bubbles will pop over time, so don't stay on them for too long. Bubbles will replenish eventually over time as well. We've got 50%, 51%. If you don't have enough, you can't shoot the cage. Even though we're quite close to the cage. The finger point is to tell you the way to go. I need one more. And there it is. Find the cage. We know where the cage is. Let's get a few more prior to going to the cage. The more the better. Helps the wars. Continues. It helps the wars. Points. There we go. Really, really good. Really pleased with this. There we go. Shoot the cage. Bingo. Level completed. Now jump for joy. Ah. 
Unused time bonus. You get bonus for that. The more you get, the more he raises up. Coolness bonus. Because I didn't collect enough, we didn't get the one up. Super Swift, another game I have never played before. This is turning out to be an extremely good day. Right, let's try it out. Okay, Super Swift, Firepower 2000 in the US is a top down shoot button released for the SNES in 1992 and was released on the Mega Drive as Mega Swift in 1994, followed by Swift 3D in 1996. The game story involves around a secret underground race of the, on an island in the Atlantic Ocean that has stolen up military vehicles and equipment from around the world and built powerful war machines from them. Military and intelligent officials of major centuries detect them, but are afraid that they will be unable to prepare themselves against the assault on the underground race. They send the player character to infiltrate their base and destroy them. Which is me. Players can either use the helicopter or the jeep. The helicopter is not stopped by obstacles, but the jeep can fire in any direction. There are also nine weapons, five permanent and four short lasting specials the player can pick up along the way. Right, again, I'm playing it for the first time, and I have to, I have to admit, I'm absolutely blown away by it. It absolutely looks superb. Looks great, sounds great. I love shoot 'em ups, and this is really, really good. Again. Now we have a shield. And of course, that protects you from everything. Two shields equals a big, big boom, which kills everything on the screen. I haven't seen that yet. Right, what do we have in our possession? We have this normal firepower, we have that, and we can switch between that. Right, okay. I love it. Really good. Oh, we got this as well. And a big, big explosion. Blimey. That's the biggest explosion I've ever seen in a computer game. Right, we got a shield. There we go. We are invincible. Let's fly into them. But again, a game I've never played before. But this has turned out to be an extremely fantastic day. Now, of course, my channel is always going to be a Commodore-based channel. But every so often, I will spice it up a little, a little bit with something different. But bear in mind, this is actually a SNES today. Don't worry, people. Commodore will be back. But if you want to see some long players on this system, then please do let me know in the comments box below. Right, let's get a shield. Safe from everything. So I'm guessing you can't get the same power you get in the Amiga version. Which is the version I played the most. Enemies anyway, take a lot of hits. They really do look good. Really good. I've never played Mega Swift. But that came out a year later. Now the CG4 version, which I am going to long play, is so much more difficult than this. In fact, I think that's more difficult than the Amiga version as well. In the Amiga version I have completed. Blimey, what going on here? Woo! I love shoot 'em ups. <laughs> Vertical or horizontal, I love them. Shield, got it. We have it. Doesn't last very long. And we've got tokens at the top right. Not sure what they do. We've got that one. I'm guessing that's what they are. H for homing, I'm guessing. That's also done by a single button. And again, I'm used to a joystick with a game like this. Shoot them up on a pad isn't one of my strong points. And we can also pick up those. Whoa! Right, got that. This is a really, really good game. Okay, pick up those. What do they do? Right, we've got two lives. So I'm assuming we do get continued. I'm guessing so. Love the explosions. Now, the helicopter is the easier vehicle to use. But, of course, the Jeep has... The ability to lock your attacks in one direction and move with another. Helicopter can only fire, fire forward, it seems. And I'm guessing we can't get a scatter shot. Because, yeah, we haven't got it yet. And also, the weapon that you would normally get power ups, I've not seen yet. Maybe it's not here. It might not exist on this version. I really like this. Ooh. Really plays well. It's really smooth, really responsive, really good. And it looks the bee's knees. No slow down on this game. Right, boss battle. It looks similar, but it is different. Where's its weakness? Right, 
Why? You don't shoot when that door is open. That is also different. What's that for the laser? And you see, it's more version of this. It's so difficult. I have to admit, so is the new version. But this could take some time because it doesn't flash very much. I'm just trying to hit it with everything I've got. Oh, okay, you do get upgrades. Ah, but you have to press a button to do it. Okay, now I speed it up. Alright, so a big, big difference. Alright. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> but I don't have a box version to, to know. Alright, so it's, it's getting upgrades, and so am I. It's firing more, and so am I. It's going to be a big, big boom in a minute. Okay, they don't do anything. Let's take a lot of hits. This takes a long time. There we go. It's confirmed. There is a big, big boom. Have some of that. What a game. What a game. Clear bonus. Bonus. Level 2. Okay, everybody, that's it in my video. I'm really pleased with this. Absolutely superb. And this is Jamie from Morden's Games. Please like this comment, be share. Please subscribe to my channel, Facebook fan page, with Instagram, or on Twitch. Just type in Morden's Games, you'll find it fairly easy. And please remember to click on the bell icon and notify you of low fantastic. We're not doing these sort of videos. I'll be happy making retro long fans out sheets and live streams every Friday night, every time, at 8 o'clock. Until next time, take it easy. Ciao, bye. See ya. Okay, this is Donkey Kong Country. A 1994 platform. Okay, let's. let's, let's. Part of Donkey Kong Country franchise created by Sergio Miyato. The game was created by... <coughs> Donkey Kong and his nephew Diddy Kong were on a quest to recover the stolen banana whore from the King Cake... <coughs> As part of Donkey Kong... <coughs> TV's gonna take itself off, which you can't see. Only I can. The asteroid belt. Andro's forces tend to build a base in the area, destroy their rock crusher. There's a lot of Hadoukens in a short space of time. Sound effects featuring people and animals shouting after the round ended were added as well. Blimey, I wasn't paying attention. I didn't even be able to one. An authentic. An authentic. Okay, this is super. I'm not happy about that display. Okay, this is Super Mario Land. I've played it for years. The Super Mario. Jamie, it's called Super Mario World. Not Super Mario Land. That's like. <coughs> the story follows Mario as he quests to save Princess Toadstool and the Monster Land. Jamie, it's a duck. Dinosaur Land. Look at that. Is that a monster or a dinosaur? It looks more like a dragon to me, but there we go. The story follows Mario as he tries to save Princess Toadstool and the Dinosaur Lands from a cells can take. Jamie. Series. Not sales. That's something completely different. If you want to go to the shop and buy something in the sales, that's what you do. But. Series. is not even close. Over the course of this video, I do apologise if you hear any bleeping. That is my Discord. If you want to join my Discord, I'll put the link to it in the description below. But it's a great way to socialise when the cameras are off. But if you hear it, I do apologise. Oh my lord. Okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't expecting that. Centuries protect them, but I'm one afraid that they are unable to pretend.